The access to education can change the trajectory of a student's life. You're given steps that you need for success in the college application process. I definitely feel more prepared than ever before. All right, hello, hello, hello. All right, my name is Joaquin Hamilton. I'm the director of College Connection here at Philadelphia Futures. Okay, today I actually have the pleasure of talking to you all about preparing yourself for college. All right. Just to get a little bit of a gauge of the crowd, how many of you actually are nervous about applying to college? Just give me a show of hands. It's pretty much everybody. All right. Um, talk to me. What are, what are some of the different things that you are nervous about? So, so what are you nervous about, about applying to college? Let me see. Jonathan? Taking the SAT. Taking the SAT. That, that's high on everybody's list. Um, give me one more. One more. One more. Um, let me see. Tahir. I'm not sure if I'll be academically prepared. Academic preparation, right, because it's a little bit of a different level once you go from high school to college. That is something that you have to think about. And I actually think I have time for one more question. Um, can I go for Geed? I don't know who can help me with the application process. You don't know who can help with the application process. Those, those are all really good concerns. And what my, my goal today is that we're actually going to try to address all of these concerns really in these seven steps about preparing yourself for college. So if you don't have your notebook out now, you should have it out, and you should certainly be writing these things down, all right? So step one, the first thing that we're going to talk about is preparing yourself academically, okay? Step two, we're going to talk about becoming a more well-rounded student. Number one, what does that look like? What does that mean? And how do you actually go about doing that? Um, step three, impress for success, okay? What is that going to look like? Step four, setting smart goals, all right? We're going to talk about how that's going to be a part of not just your college life or your high school life, but really your life past this point, okay? Step five, assembling your college prep team. So, Geed, we're actually going to talk directly about who should be in that team, why they should be in that team, and what characteristics you should be looking for. Um, step six, conquering the SAT and the ACT. And then step seven, we're going to give you a good checklist. All right, you're going to have a checklist of all the things that you should be preparing for, whether you're a first year student or if you're going into your senior year. All right, so those are the different things that we're going to tackle. All right, the first thing we're going to do is, to, again, step one, preparing yourself academically. When I think of this, I think of it in levels, okay? So level number one, you must, you have to take four years of four academic solid courses, okay? When I talk about the academic solid courses, I'm talking about English, math, science, social studies. You need to have four years of each of those particular subjects. That's level one, all right? That's just the basics that you're going to need to prepare yourself. If you want to take it another level, go to level two, now we want to talk about academically challenging yourself. So my assumption is that at every one of everybody's school, there's some sort of honors, advanced, or AP or IB track at your school. Those are different things that you're going to want to start to add to your curriculum. You want to add that to your schedule to show that, number one, you're willing to go above and beyond to really showcase yourself as a serious student. So that's one thing that you certainly want to do. Now, once you've conquered that, the next thing you're going to start talking about is level three. Now, level three is going outside of your high school to find these academic challenges. So dual enrollment courses, summer enrichment programs. Okay, dual enrollment courses are classes that you're gonna take, number one, at your either local college or a local community college, all right? You're gonna do that in conjunction while you're in high school. Now the summer enrichment programs, this is actually an opportunity for you to go visit a campus, stay on campus for a few weeks and take college level courses. Sometimes you can actually even get college credit for those. All right? So those are kind of the three levels that you're going to want to think about. Showcasing yourself as a serious student in this process is going to show wonders about being prepared for the college application process. Now, the future's tip, okay? The future's tip for success. You must plan ahead, all right? This is not a time for you to wait till the last minute, all right? A game plan thing that you should be thinking about is talking to your guidance counselor or a school official about how can you start to add these to your list, all right? Now, even though I'm talking mainly about what you can do on your high school and inside the classroom, 
there's also practice and prep that you have to do beforehand, okay? So there are skills that you should be building right now. And I would say think of high school as like a practice field, okay? Just like athletes practice, just like musicians practice, this is a time for you to actually enact that practice. Building your study skills. Building your study skills are key. Number one, finding out what are the best ways for you to study. Is it individually? Is it with a group? Understanding that is going to, number one, show in your grades because they're going to go up because you're actually doing some good studying that's going to fit you. But then on top of that, you're also setting yourself up to build these skills for once you get to college. Other thing that you should be doing, reading. <laughs> Building reading skills. Reading is going to be a key component throughout the entire college process. So you want to make sure that in high school, you're not just reading what you have in class, but you're also reading some additional books outside of class. Um, and then last but not least, what you guys are doing right now, note taking. Active listening, being able to hear what I'm saying and then actually put it into your own words in your notebook and really be able to process that information is a key skill to learn right now, okay? So let's move to step two, becoming a well-rounded student, okay? This is gonna be a great opportunity where your skills and your interests are really gonna showcase themselves in the college application process, okay? But again, this is something that you're gonna to have to prepare for, all right? Now that you're in high school, there are gonna be a number of different ways you can add to this list of becoming a well-rounded student. The first way that you're gonna be able to do that is get involved, okay? There are various clubs and activities that you can join, all right? The clubs and activities are gonna probably align up with the things that you like, um, but also feel free to find some things that may be outside of your comfort zone. This could be a really fun way to explore and really kind of see what your particular interests are. Um, another way you can also add to this is community service, okay? And meaningful community service. Not just showing up for one day and then leaving and forget you ever did it, but actually a sustained commitment to a particular organization or an activity, okay? Really showing meaning, not just putting something on your resume, but really showing meaning to yourself about why this is important and being able to talk about it really with a sense of passion. That's something that you really should be trying to think about when you're thinking about what type of community service opportunities you want to take advantage of. Um, another thing that you could do, jobs and internships, okay? Internships sound fancy, but jobs are just as important. So again, if you are a local bus boy or if you work at your local fast food place, all of that starts to fill in your story, okay? Because there's a reason behind everything. One of the things I always wanna make sure you understand is that everything counts. All right, so the other thing that I really wanna highlight as well is this idea of family responsibilities, okay? Some of you are big brothers and big sisters. You have people who really look up to you. And you also probably take on some more responsibilities in the household than normal or than a traditional family would. In that particular case, you do want to list that and talk about that a little bit. Again, it goes to complete your story and it adds context from a college's perspective. All of that is very important. Futures tips for success, academics come first, okay? No matter what involvement you have, no matter how many community service hours you do, the thing that is most important to colleges is that you are a serious, dedicated student. That's what we want to see. Another thing to think about, leadership skills, okay? Leadership opportunities in these particular programs are very important. So again, it's not simply just about, hey, I joined a club, but it's also about how have I stayed committed to that club and also advanced in leadership. One, it shows a college that you're a serious person, but then on top of that, it also shows that you can give that level of commitment and you've also developed some of these leadership skills while you've been taking advantage of these programs at your high school, okay? Step three, impress for success. Now I want you guys to do this with me. It's gonna sound silly, but I want you to do this with me. Say this with me. I am a college-bound student. I am a college-bound student. Say it one more time. I am a college-bound student. I am a college-bound student. Let's try one more time. I am a college-bound student. It is important that you truly embody what it means to be a college-bound student. So actually, what ways can you actually really impress? What ways can you actually showcase yourself as an impressive student? Okay, um, Brandon. Have a firm handshake. A firm handshake, that's great, that's great. 
Um, another one, another one. Mirage? Look people in the eye when you speak to them. Look at people in the eye, you did a great job there. And not like weird looking in the eye, but like a real sincere look of like showing that you're attentive, showing that you're really present at that moment. Um, another, another, some other hands. Someone that I haven't heard from yet. Uh, Jude. You have to sit in front of the classroom and ask questions. Sit in front of the classroom and ask questions. Right, that's really important. It really show that you're a student who's dedicated to your academics. And again, I have time for one more. One more. Samir. You should always dress professionally. That is very true. Very true, okay? All of those things make a difference. Really showcasing yourself as a serious college-bound student, you know, sharing these thoughts and these ideas with your family, your friends, um, people within your community, not only just telling them, but actually showing them by your actions, that's going to really make a huge difference in how people treat you and also how people interact with you on a normal basis. If they know that you're a serious college-bound student, if that's what you portray every day when you walk out of the door, that's what people are gonna treat you like, all right? So I want you to ask yourself a few questions. So one of the questions I want you to consider asking yourself, number one, do I think about my future goals? And do I share my future goals with my family and my friends, okay? Is my behavior inside and outside of the classroom appropriate for a college-bound student? And I know, that, again, this is going to sound a little weird, but does my social media presence show me as a college-bound student? So do your Twitter handles or does your Instagram page or your Facebook page show that, you know what, I am a student who's going to go off to college? Making sure that that is a proper reflection of you goes a long way, all right? Step four, set SMART goals. Setting SMART goals or setting goals in general are going to really kind of keep you motivated throughout this process. There are going to be high moments and low moments. There's going to be moments where it's really high energy. You're getting a lot of things done. And then there's going to be some moments that are going to be a little bit slower. And you're going to have to find a way to stay motivated nonetheless. Setting goals allows you to do that. And for us, we actually like to stress this idea of setting SMART goals, okay? So when we say SMART goals, we're talking about goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-specific, okay? Your goals should have all of those characteristics. And understanding that and being able to take and, and actually make those types of SMART goals are going to be something not only that you're going to use here in high school, but you're going to use in college, and you're going to use it for the rest of your life. So I want you to really start to think about what goals that you want to set for yourself this upcoming year in both the short term and then think about long term once you get into college. Step five, assemble your college prep team, okay? This is for me, I, I think of this as like the draft, all right? So first, when you think about it, you should have in that, in that group, you should be thinking about friends, you should be thinking about family members, parents or guardians, mentors, school officials, people within your world that you really feel like have a vested interest in you doing well, okay? Now, future's tip for success, this team should be diverse, okay? And what I mean by diverse, I mean it should have people who, number one, you trust. It should also have people that really can go the long distance with you, meaning in the good moments, they're there to give you a high five. In a little bit of the low moments, they're there to give you a big hug. You need all of that. And also, one of the major added ingredients, you also need at least a few people who know the college process in and out. You want to have someone, whether they have gone to college or not have gone to college, can truly understand what it takes to go from point A to point B in the college application process. That's going to be something key for you to walk around with, okay? Step six, conquering the SAT and the ACT. Again, 
I know there's some concern around this, okay? I get a lot of students, they'll come up to me and they'll tell me, no, I, I don't take tests very well, okay? The SAT or the ACT, that doesn't properly show my talents or my skills, right? I understand that. But I also have kind of a dose of reality to tell you. It's a part of the application process. No matter what you're going to do, you're going to have to take the SAT or the ACT. You're going to have to take some standardized test. All right? Now, there are a lot of tools out there to help you with this. Okay? You have, number one, tools that can help you figure out which test is going to be better for you, whether you should take the SAT or the ACT. Okay? And then there's also going to be tools that's going to help you with prep. All right? Now, the future's tip for success in this area, practice, practice, practice. Okay? You can start as early as your first year. You can pick up a book and you can start reading. You know, every time you read a new book, you're adding vocabulary. Every time you read a newspaper article, you're adding vocabulary. All right? You can pick up an SAT prep book. These are opportunities. But on top of that, one thing, we found this wonderful website, the Khan Academy, all right? They actually give really, really awesome prep on the SAT, okay? So not only are they going to give you questions and answers, but they're also going to actually walk you through some of the ways they went about getting that answer. I think that this is a very valuable use for any student. Again, whether you're a first-year student or you're going into your senior year for real prep. Step seven make in your college preparation checklist. Now this is key. This is the actual steps that you're going to be walking through to figure out what you need to do to prepare. All right, so you really should be taking notes in this area. The first thing that you're going to need to do, talk to your parents or guardians, really, about your college plans. You want to begin to research and visit colleges together. All right? Letting your parents know about these things, letting your parents know what your goals are, what your expectations are, will allow them to start to get on the same page with you. So now you guys are working as a team. All right? That's going to be key as you go through this process because you, as you realize, you do need a team around you to make this happen. Okay? The next thing, make sure you're enrolled in the most challenging courses at your high school. Okay? This is tricky. First thing you need to do is make sure you're talking to your high school guidance counselor. You also need to understand that you may have to step outside of your comfort zone. You're going to have to challenge yourself a little bit. You're going to have to take a course that's a little bit past your skill set, but it's going to help you develop, and it's going to help you get better as a scholar, and it's also going to show a college that you're actually willing to do those things. The next one, you, you want to read books, you want to read websites, okay? You want to also read newspapers to really build your vocabulary in that sense. This is going to, again, help you prepare not only for the college process, but also for the SAT and the ACT. Join clubs and activities that are of interest to you. Your interests are going to develop throughout your entire four years of high school. So things that you join in ninth grade, still stay with. But if you want to add another one during your sophomore year and another one during your junior year because your interests have expanded, that should be something you think about doing. That's going to be fun, and it's really going to, again, add to you the conversation or your story as a student in the application process. Volunteer at an organization within your community, okay? That's another great way of not just for the college process, but just for your own personal development of giving back. Set short and long-term goals, all right? We talked about SMART goals. Um, really make sure you structure your goals around that type of idea. Carry yourself as a college-bound student, okay? When you carry yourself that way, people react to you in that way, all right? Make sure people know that you are serious about going to college and nothing is going to stand in your way, okay? The last thing, begin preparing for the SAT and ACT. You can start this as early as your first year. No one should walk out of here and think that they can't pick up a book to begin preparing for this, all right? There are way too many resources online. There are way too many resources just at your fingertips that you should let this opportunity pass, okay? 
I am pumped that you guys are getting ready for this process, okay? You guys have all the information. We went through it. I know you know it. I know you know how to do it. Now it's about putting it in action, okay? You guys have four years, four years of a college experience to truly enjoy and take advantage of. If you prepare in high school now, that four years is going to be the best four years of your life. Really, really think about what you need to do right now to make sure those four years are the greatest times of your life. All right? Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.